Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, Cycle C. Lent is the period of preparation for the celebration of the Feast of Our Salvation, Easter. Before we set up the decorations for any celebration, we usually start with a good cleaning of everywhere and everything that is involved in that celebration. There can be no proper celebration of our celebration of the Feast of our, the Resurrection without the Sacrament of Reconciliation. We should never show up, or we will never show up, to an elegant wedding with clothes that are stained and dirty. God pays more attention to our spiritual garment, our soul, than to our physical garment. There will be a parish celebration of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. This Monday, with the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament after the 7 p.m. Mass, which is about the 7.40 p.m. Details are in the bulletin. You never fully own your sins until you tell another you need. Once you own and confess a sin, you will be challenged to do something about it. If you omit a sin from confession, it is because you are not ready to ask God to heal you from this sin or you don't believe you can give it up. Today's Gospel is about devious scribes and Pharisees who are trying to trap Jesus. Jesus escaped this trap but also made the incident an opportunity to teach us about the mercy and compassion of God the Father and that forgiveness we expect to receive from Him would always be extended to us and therefore we should extend it to others. The religious authorities in Jerusalem did not have the authority to condemn a person to death. The, that punishment was reserved for the Roman authorities. This is why Jesus had to be taken before Pilate, even though the Sanhedrin had condemned him <clears throat> to death for blasphemy, claiming to be the Son of God. If Jesus concurred with the sentence prescribed by Moses, he would have been arrested for disobeying Roman law. And if he declared her innocent, which he could not, since she was caught in the very act of adultery, the scribes and the Pharisees would have discredited Jesus as a one who does not teach the law. The Gospel does not mention why the adulterous man who faced the same consequences, same punishment, is not brought to justice or the disposition of the spouses. Jesus tried to ignore them by writing in the sand, but they persisted with their questions. He escaped their trap, their trap by suggesting that a person without sin should be the first one to throw a stone at her. Starting with the elders, those with the most experience and wisdom, they went away one by one. We have to give the crowd credit for coming to the realization that they too were sinners. In our culture, 
where there are very little, little self-reflection, we would have demanded that the law be enforced regardless of our own sinfulness. When everyone left, the woman was alone with Jesus, and he asked her, has no one condemned you? He said, no one, sir. Jesus then said, neither do I condemn you. What does Jesus mean by condemn? She was guilty of having been caught in the very act of adultery. Yes, but they did not condemn her in the end, neither did Jesus. Did Jesus think she had sinned? Yes, because he told her, do not sin anymore. Not condemned seemed to me not punished. She sinned, was guilty, but was not punished. She received a second chance. We have sinned, we are guilty, but we can receive a second chance if we go to confession. But remember the words of Jesus. After confession, go and from now on do not sin anymore. Please also show mercy you have received from God. 